It is amazing how different corals look when they're closed versus open. Corals transport better when they're closed because the shell is able to offer some protection. When you get your coral from your store, they typically come in plastic bags that you can use to acclimatize them to the tank. Just by floating them on the top for half an hour, you can reduce temperature shock. When you release the coral, throw away the water that they're transported in because it can be full of waste. When the coral is closed, it's easy to handle and position in the tank. Some corals can sting you, so it's best to use gloves and don't touch the fleshy part of the coral because you can damage it. Try to only contact the hard skeleton. You can use putties and glues that can help you secure the coral into the aquarium. Depending on the species, you need to position the coral so it's best able to get the light and water flow that it requires. But don't underestimate the coral's ability to open up once it starts to be happy. You gotta give it plenty of room. Be very careful what corals you allow near each species because some are gonna sting each other. Similar species are best kept in the same area of the tank because they don't tend to sting each other. It is normal for corals to excrete a waxy film, especially when they're new or stressed that isn't anything to worry about. Once you put new corals in your aquarium, you want to monitor them for about three weeks. It's really important to know what the coral should look like when they're happy. Because if after three weeks, you've given them time to settle in and they're not happy, you might want to consider moving them to another position in reference to light, water flow or neighboring species. If you've got high powered lights, it's a good idea to introduce the corals to the bottom of the aquarium or turn the lights down at the start to allow the corals to adjust to the synthetic light. It's really important that you know what the coral looks like when it's open. So spending some time looking at successful aquariums and looking at their corals and looking at how their corals are acting and performing will give you a good idea where to position your corals and what to expect from each individual species. There are various dips on the market that are very popular. Giving the coral a little bit of a dip, following any instructions to rid parasites is a good idea before you put the corals into the aquarium. If you do have a big display tank with a lot of money's worth of coral, it's really a good idea to have a quarantine tank. That way you can quarantine any new corals to the aquarium and not risk the other corals in the aquarium if you bring a pest or a disease. In general, a spontaneous purchase is a bad idea. It's a much better idea to do your due diligence first. Create a wish list and show that wish list to as many expert acarists as you can. Allow them to go through your wish list with an understanding of your system and give advice on the various corals that you're thinking about keeping. Because that wish list may be a really good way of you ascertaining whether each coral is a one, two, or a three coral. Now what I call a number one coral is a coral that's very easy to keep. A number two coral tends to be more challenging. So this is a good thing to know before you buy it. Whereas a number three coral is very hard to keep. You really wanna think twice about buying a number three coral and only buy it on good advice that you're able to offer conditions that may allow this animal to thrive. When buying new coral, you really wanna bring your logbook, which is your test results, a water sample and a video of your tank running, including the filter, even all the stuff you've got for your tank. Video the cupboard so you can see the stuff inside bring that down to your local store and show that to them before you buy a coral so they can check that you're ready. Be aware that some corals, such as SPS corals, require very low nutrient environments, while LPS and soft corals can handle much higher nutrient levels. Remember that some fish will pick on the coral, which will damage them over time. This can be a very hard thing to actually prove because they'll often not do it while you're watching. So you can be surprised, just chuck a camera on the tank and see what your fish are doing when you're not around. You can be surprised. Corals prefer a salinity of 0.025. So it's a good idea to settle your fish in 
before you get the corals, unless you've got a quarantine tank for your fish. Because the idea is to introduce the fish into lower salinity and then slowly raise the salinity. Over a year, your corals should grow. If they are not growing, you need to seek the help of an expert aquarist to get you back on track. Because it's all about balance. Your corals basically only die for two reasons. They die because they're getting too much of something or not enough of something. Maybe too much light, maybe not enough light, maybe too much flow, maybe not enough flow. So it's important to investigate what's going on with your tank. So once you've got all the main things right and you've got all your macro tests right, the other thing you can do is send away ICP tests. And these ICP tests can un uncover issues with trace elements and other things that are worth considering. Many corals can now be fragged and propagated. So these really need to be preference over wild species because they also tend to be tank hardy. You'll always hear stories of the coral reefs dying due to the incredible amount of strain that they're under. So why not do your part? Preserve, grow, propagate and trade these amazing corals right there in your living room.